Hi guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So, not really got a very good excuse for this one. I know we have covered this unit a lot. It is, of course, the Fort of Brachios. Maybe we're going to have to put this video in some sort of disguise. Maybe we'll name it something different or something to try and hide the fact that we've got another video on them. I don't know, what could we call it? For Fort of Brachio? Nothing really rhymes with the Fort of Brachio, does it? I Bashio? I Pistachio? I brought a pistachio for Tabrachio. It kind of works. I don't know. We'll see. If you know if the video is called I brought a pistachio, then you know that I'm just trying to hide the fact that we're having like the 10th video on four Tabrachios. I just love this unit. Um, and I don't get that much time in game. So the time I do get in game, I have to try and uh, record basically what I'm playing. And I'm always looking for a good excuse to play these. And of course, since we are in the tier four lock at the moment, they are actually really nice. They fit in the meta really well, and there's so many stalwarts in the game, there's always a nice set of shields to hide behind, and that suits the Fortabrechos really quite nicely. So, what is the unit all about? Well, most of you all know, but essentially it's a really long pike unit. It's the only sort of unit of its type really in the game. I know we have things like halberdiers, pike militia, and other sort of short pike units. It's the only unit that has sort of really long you know, like 12 foot pikes sort of thing. So of course they only really have one ability, the ability to brace. You can do it in a couple of different formations. Um, you can use dispersed, occasionally I'll use dispersed if I'm in an, a, an open area or if you're under range attack or cannon attack or something. Um, and I might use it just to brace it if there's cav in a field, but normally I'm using the block when I'm inside an, uh, a friendly shield unit, and occasionally, if, if the fight sort of gets a little bit spread out, I might form into a line just to give me a little wider front. And then you're gonna brace into that. Now I've got them going down the top line um, for things like, you know, increased brace weapon armor penetration, etc. a little bit of extra damage, reduction in range damage, um, you know, the extra AP while bracing again, and it can essentially do a double strike, or it can hit two people with one stab. In terms of doctrines, nothing too really exceptional. Um, the, the brace weapon stun, so that they cause stun when they hit enemy units. The extra damage while bracing, extra damage to units, a little bit of extra piercing damage, and a little bit of just extra defensive stats, mostly for the hit points, and because I wasn't really sure what else to put on it. So, I don't really want this to be a long video. Let's just hop into a few games with them and have a little bit of fun with these Fortabrachios, or pistachios, if that's what we're calling them. So, we kick things off on Hidden City. Certainly didn't see that coming. As we're making a bit of a push up the far right siege tower, trying to get the A point. It's our first sort of real push of the game. Um, handily, the team comes with us pretty, pretty convincingly. We make a solid push. Having a shield unit to sort of hide your forties in is honestly a real bonus. It makes such a difference to how they perform. Get up, start to engage these berserkers. The fort pressures are quite slow. You will kind of get used to how long they take to move to places. We do just manage to stab that berserker in the chest with 32 pikes. <laughs> so they are actually quite nice as a little anti-berserker unit because they so many of them can hit a target at once. You just overwhelm the berserker's uh, defense. Anyway, we get on, get onto the A point and start capping. Just get the unit set up. There's quite a fight over there which I am tempted to kind of go and wander down and get engaged in. Um, which is a hint, you see, the temptation was too much. I, I kind of wanted to cap the point, but the temptation was too much, so we start to move down a little bit. But really, with these trebs coming in, it actually gets a lot of the damage. We just hang back a little bit to set up against these stalwarts, and you can see, that's 10 kills pretty much instantly. Because of the nature of this wall, I went into a line formation here, and you can see we just set up, set through. And you can see how rapidly we pick up kills. And then, as it sort of disintegrates into a little bit of a dispersed fight like that, just set them into loose formation. They got a buff a couple of patches ago, which essentially means the AI is a little bit more clever about how they fight in a dispersed formation. So rather than um, walking up to the enemy and being really close, they now try and use distance to keep their uh, keep themselves safe. Anyway, onto the supply point. Good that we got a good push going here. Um, I kind of wanted to get these guys set up quite effectively. A little bit of a tough place to set up with where the building is, getting the camera angle. But we get in, get into a line formation at the back, and, you know, pick us up another six or seven kills as we put in and help clear the point. Then it's just a case of setting back up in case they make a counter push, particularly against stuff like Cav and stuff, get set up on the point as we cap out the supply pot, because, of course, we want to be getting this unit healed up a little bit. And then we can sit here and wait for them to get healed. 
So quite pleased with that. Not always that easy to get this supply point. We're able to carry the momentum over. And that's kind of the story of this game, really. Keeping the momentum going. And it seems to work really well for us. Once we're healed, back on the attack. Back pushing towards the B point. And actually, it's just honestly not that much here. We push, obviously, around to the back of the defences they've got here. Poor Maul just got absolutely flattened. <laughs> we can just push in. Stuff like this, just setting them on loose attack. There's not really anything much... Um, uh, of any sort of use attacking us, so it's not really too much of a problem. Get Cav, and I managed to quickly switch to a line formation, and you see, and we can just brace into all that Cav. And the pikes do um, spin around, essentially, to face whatever dangers they're facing, and they turn so quickly that it's it's really kind of easy. We get this, um, Adachi comes in, and he's dead. <laughs> Quite a good anti-hero unit, these um, forties. But I suppose it does show you have to keep a little bit of situational awareness for cavalry. If you get charged from the back, the cavalry will flatten you quite nicely. So you do have to be kind of a little bit on your toes, prepared to sort of switch around, prepared to change uh, position if you need to, to try and, you know, obviously brace into the cav like we did there. Anyway, B point secured. Turned into quite a strange game. Just get straight back on the offensive. This At this point, I was kind of wishing the unit was a bit quicker so I could get involved in some of the fighting a bit quicker. This poor Stalwarts just got absolutely flattened. <laughs> so much so much stuff pushed into them, they just didn't stand a chance. Uh, got charged into by a few Claymores. We just form up, brace into them. And as you can see, we can hit essentially from the safety of our own units. You can see the damage strikes coming in. <laughs> just such an effective unit. And now the unit pivots as well, so that if enemies are slightly off to an angle to the side or something like that, then it just kills things so effectively that... Yeah, it just makes 40s an absolute all-round perfect unit for this sort of thing. So, on to the final base point. Obviously, at this point, I think the bloodlust is up for the whole team. We've just been stomping them so far. So, he's come in. Initially, I just wanted to make set up, make sure, see what's going on cav-wise coming from their main base. But it doesn't look like anything's really pushing around. So, I'm happy to sort of push into the corner and kind of get a bit stuck in down here. Initially, sort of run a bit just in loose formation, but braced up into the unit in the corner. Start to get a little bit tapped from the side, so I pull back into the friendly stuff a little bit more, form into a line to give me a little bit of a wider front, and then we can just push back up and try and secure the main point, essentially. We're just trying to keep an eye on that situational awareness. It's quite a good unit for teaching you situational awareness. We pivot back round as the cavalry comes, and obviously deal with the cavalry without any problem, those dagger axe lances. That's kind of the most important thing about this unit, I think situational awareness and I think for newer players trying to sort of learn the game it's quite a good unit for learning because it teaches you this quite effectively if you're as soon as you sort of drop the ball stop paying attention turn your vision onto a unit you'll get run over by cavalry behind and it's really frustrating knowing full well that you could beat them easily so yeah I think it's quite good for that anyway start to get up the final cap of the point push the unit forwards a little bit further just into these some of these stalwarts and you can see we pick up kills fairly convincingly they are tend to be a unit that does really win in these Stalwart fights quite effectively because of the amount of damage they can do from range. Anyway, that was my little uh, foray back into the Fort Brashers. Do absolutely love the unit. Would highly recommend everyone gets them unlocked if you haven't already. They are a unit well, well worth playing. And I think they've, even if not sort of tier one meta, they've been a sort of tier two secondary unit for a long, long time. Um, and I don't think that's going to change. They are still ultimately the most effective cavalry counter, and I think they're always going to have a fairly good place on the battlefield. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, subscribe to the channel, of course. You should probably do that. Uh, we'll be having some more Conqueror's Blade content, so thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all on the next one.